the most important part of the manifestation process is the choice. What is the choice? The choice is what you want. That's it. It's the start of the process. Remember, we are always manifesting. That is such an important point. I don't, for context, I don't have any tattoos. And for most of my life, I've been really resistant towards tattoos. Like I just, it was an absolute no for me. I would consider getting that tattooed somewhere where I can see it every day. It is that important. We are always manifesting. Whether you do it consciously or not, you are manifesting. So why not do it consciously? This is why what you choose to manifest is the most important step in the process. Because what you choose will come to pass. Now, I know some of you might be going, well, that's obviously not true because I want this and I haven't gotten it. <laughs> this is where it gets so much fun. This is where we can like delve in and sink our teeth in. This is good. I put it to you that what you think you want is not what you actually want. You consciously want this thing, but you're scared of failing. You could be scared of getting it over the responsibility that you would have to adopt as a result of getting what you want. It could just simply be that it's uncharted territory. You have lived this way all your life, but you really want to live that way. But it's alien to you. And the moment you get it, you don't know how to act. I mean, you see this all the time. Again, money, great for examples. You see this all the time. People win the lottery. People who don't have a lot of money originally win the lottery and they waste it, right? Because they're not comfortable with that amount of money. The choice. The choice is so important. And I see so many people not making the choice or, or muddying the waters, being unsure, thinking they know what they want, but not knowing what they want. And I'm guilty of this hugely. It's like a big issue for me, which is why probably why I'm so excited to talk about it. And I love to, to help others through it. I want a lot of things. I want some big things, right? <laughs> And some of them are blocked because I don't believe I'm ready. I don't think it's possible. I'm getting better at it. I'm working on it. I'm getting better. Some things, it's like I said, like once you get there, what are you going to do? It's kind of scary, you know? It's, it's radically different. I have been tempted multiple times in my life to make radical change. I mean, like, really radical for me at least and I've been really excited about it but if I'm being honest with myself I never really committed I took steps towards it I told people I was going to do it but deep in here I never properly committed and that's why it didn't come to pass and you know what that's fine because I didn't really want it I may want it in the future, but at that time, it's not what I wanted. So that's not what I got. So whenever you want something that's a bit scary and you find yourself repeatedly falling back into a safe routine, into a safe life, I want you to really analyze whether you want that big thing, whether you want the change, or if the safe, comfortable, mundane life is more appealing. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that you go, oh, okay, I'll just accept the mundane life because that's what I really want. That's the fun part of like all this of being human. We're kind of fucked up creatures, right? <laughs> we want completely disparate things 
for different reasons, you know? It's like, I want this because it'll make me happy, but I want this because I'm too scared to go for that. So which want is stronger? That's the want that wins. So how do you break past it? Let's, let's assume that you want something big. You don't need to want something big, but let's use this, this example. Let's pretend you want something big, but it's too scary. It's too scary to commit to. And so you actually end up wanting the safer option that isn't necessarily going to make you happy or not going to fulfill you the most. It's not going to make you the happiest you could possibly be. This is why you have to sometimes do some, like it could be shadow work, or it could be like just work in the physical realm to like get you used to wanting the bigger thing. I'll bear my soul for a second. For most of my life, I was severely depressed and suicidal. And I got myself out of it. And this is not like, not to brag, it's just what happened, it's the truth. I didn't have any luck with psychiatry, personally. I got myself out of it. So the reason I'm bringing this up, using this as an example, because when you were in that state, yeah, you want to not be depressed and you want to go out and live your life and have fun and have friends. But the want to remain depressed is stronger. So what you have to do sometimes is take physical action that you don't want to do, stuff that's easy that you can do, but you don't want to do it, so that you can get yourself out of the thought process of where I am is good and safe and this is what I actually want. Right, so you go out for a walk or uh, go to the gym or you know whatever. It's all these the little things that, that usually get suggested when it comes to depression, right? Until you start to actually want the bigger things. You want to get out and be happy and live your life. Truly, you want it more than you want to stay home and be safe and remain depressed, right? Now, um, these are very extreme examples, I know, and, and this may not resonate with a lot of you, so let's, let's try to bring it back. <laughs> Leaving a job, right? A simple career change, and like not even anything too crazy. Let's not even say like you want to pursue a music career or something, right? You, you're in job A and you want to be in job B, and it is distinctly possible. It's not. Like if you tell people, people aren't going to go, oh man, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, like dream a little smaller, be realistic, right? It's a very realistic goal. But there can still be resistance there because you're giving up the perceived security of your current situation. So you have to make the choice. There it is. <laughs> it really is. Like I cannot stress enough how important it is because when your choice is clouded, when it is uncertain, when it is not focused, then it doesn't come to pass. This is also why if you want like lots of things and you're trying to manifest a whole bunch of things, it can get like really difficult because today you really want this and tomorrow you really want that. And you start to go, especially if, if you have some resistance mixed in there and your desires appear to clash in your mind, they might not actually clash. You, you can have it all. You can figure out a way to have it all. But if in here you're going, I can't have that if I have that, then bruh, <laughs> you know, Monday you're manifesting that, Tuesday you're manifesting that, and they're canceling each other out. And that's why nothing's happening. So it's starting small is a good idea. I don't think it's necessary, but it's a good idea. Stay focused. And if you're really, really struggling with, like if you really, really want multiple things, 
find a way, and this is like a mental exercise, find a way to combine them and have them all into the one thing. Then you can focus on the one thing. You can make the choice that, yes, I'm going to be that. I'm going to have that. That is me. And it's got to be unwavering. It's not like, oh yeah, that's me today. And tomorrow maybe I'll change my mind. No. You need to know what you want. And you need to choose it. Commit to it. And then it'll commit to you. All right, as always, take what resonates and discard the rest.